everybody and welcome to this small preview to the future masterclasses that coaches uh, is going to start uh, starting this Monday we'll have the first masterclass and uh, on Tuesday I will have I will start my series of masterclasses which will be on pawn structures um, just to tell you a few words about uh, what I'm going to do in this series. Uh, we are going to see some of the, um, I think, most uh, problematic or uh, pawn structures, some uh, that can be uh, both seen as a, um, as a weakness and as uh, a good thing, as uh, an advantage. So uh, for this series, I've chosen the, uh, the isolated pawn, the hanging pawns, and the double pawns. So we are going to have, uh, inside this series, we're going to have six uh, group lessons, uh, six master classes, uh, and in each we are going to study the advantages and disadvantages of uh, each of these structures. Hello to everybody joining. I will be uh, reading the chats on YouTube and I'm just about to open the Twitch chat, so I'm going to be reading those too. If you have any questions about the master classes and about the positions that we are going to see, please feel free to write them in the chat. Just one second, I am going to get the Twitch chat now, so I have everything open and we'll be ready to go. I've chosen a few positions that we can discuss today, uh, sort of exercises, and we'll simply go through all of the, the three uh, structures that I was telling that I'm going to cover in the master classes. So now I should have, there we go, I have the Twitch chat open as well, so please, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, I am ready to uh, look at both chats now. So, um, yeah, the master classes. If uh, you've probably seen my colleagues talking about uh, theirs before, you probably know that they are some group lessons, and uh, where we are going to study different things. So, <laughs> I see a question: How to improve chess visualization? Um, well, I uh, would prefer if the questions would be connected to what we are seeing today, but basically how to improve chess visualization, uh, solve many tactics no? and uh, calculation. So let's see. Uh, how about this first position that we have right now on the board? By the way, it's white to play. Um, we have a position with the hanging pawns. Yeah. These two pawns here are known as hanging pawns. And they are, um, again, a problematic structure in the sense that you never know whether they are good or bad. No, they're, uh, they're supposed to be a weakness, but they also allow a lot of counterplay and a lot of um, active play, a lot of activity to the side that has them. So basically in these positions, the side who's playing with the hanging pawns is going to uh, try to uh, activate their pieces um, we're going to talk more about this in the master classes uh, and we'll see what other ideas the side playing with them uh, has but basically dynamic play is what they they are looking for and for the side playing against them well we're trying to prove that they are weak so we're obviously going to try to attack them and most of the times what we want to do is provoke one of, the, of them to advance so that we can then fix them and uh, attack them easier. Uh, I'm going to start with a few uh, tactical, well, more, more tactical exercises. So let's see what we can find here. The master classes, no, they are not books. They are uh, just uh, some group lessons. You can go to coaches.com and sign up for them. Uh, mine are going to be every Tuesday, starting from uh, 5.30 CET, uh, Madrid time, and um, 
Yes, as I was saying, we are going to discuss some uh, specific pawn structures. We are going to look at the isolated queen's pawn, uh, hanging pawns, and also the doubled pawns. They are going to be group lessons, so you also have a very good price for them. Uh, right now they are discounted at 50%, so you can, can, can just go to coaches.com and check them out. So let's discuss a bit uh, this position that we have uh, right now on the board. We can see that uh, for now black hasn't really uh, gotten their pieces out. No, the black hasn't really gotten this dynamic play that I was uh, talking about. Um, and their pieces are a bit uh, misplaced. No, still there's still room for improvement. And white's pieces are very active for now. This knight on b5, this bishop on g2 is hitting on the pawn on d5. The queen on c2 is also looking at this pawn on, on c5. The rook on d1. Uh, there's only the rook on a1 that's not participating for now. Um, rook c1 could be one of the ideas. But since we have a knight on b5 and black is threatening to take it, well, this rook on a1 is waiting for the a file to get open. So that could be uh, an idea for the rook. So how, how could we play here with white? We have this nice position. Let's see. What would you guys <laughs> play here? Yes, I am stirring coffee. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm having my, uh, my coffee here. So let's see. How how can we continue here with white? How can we make use of the hanging pawns before uh, black can activate their pieces? Okay, how about a Twitch chat? There's a lot of silence there. I'm just a reminder that I'm also reading the Twitch chat. So I see here some suggestions in the YouTube chat. Knight f3 to d4 looks like an interesting option. And uh, I also see bishop e3. Put pressure on c5. Okay. But we have to be careful, not put pressure on c5. Um, we have to see what happens after bishop takes b5. That's going to be a big question. Rook c1. B4 is a suggestion in the Twitch chat. Okay. Yes, there is a pin on the C file uh, against that pawn on C5. And yes, we can use it. Uh, how about B4 though? Mm, B4. Okay, I'll have to see what happens if bishop takes B5 because that's. Uh, a pawn there, no? First thing, bishop takes b5, pawn takes, queen takes. Okay, there must be compensation for white, but we have uh, a better move here, which has actually been suggested already in the YouTube chat, uh, and that is knight to d4. Oh, let's see why this move is so great here. Knight f to d4. Okay. What's going on? There we go. Knight to d4 attacks the queen. They can't take because this pawn is pinned. So here, um, black has a, a few choices, but the point of knight d4 is that this knight is going to end up on f5. No? So we are getting our pieces very active. If, for example, queen b7 in this position, knight f5 looks very good. And we can take on e7, and then, yes, the pawn on c5 is going to be uh, even weaker, no? We can put additional pressure on on this pawn. But in the game, queen b6 was played, and this is slightly worse. Why is this move worse? Queen b7 was the best that black could have done, but still white's position was very good. What is the problem with queen b6? What can we do now? Uh, 
because of a5 says Zoran what do you think what does the YouTube chat think Piyush also thinks that a5 okay yes there are ideas um, with harassing the Queen right now but keep looking for options we have a5 and that's pretty good now they have to play Queen b7 after a5 and we have to look for a continuation after Queen b7 Bishop e3 eccentric horse but Bishop e3 Bishop e3 what happens if I take on d4 what am I missing pawn takes I think I think I'm I'm fine, no? Queen b7, pawn takes, bishop takes, queen b7. Okay, Ben C bishop a5. Okay, so we have another very interesting option there, bishop a5. Same idea as a5, but bishop a5 uh, looks even better, no? Because we create these additional threats of knight to c7. So bishop a5 here is a very good move. And the point is that we have a knight c6 move, correct. Queen takes, we have this knight c6 here, and the queen b6, I think, the only move, and now knight e7, and d5 is also hanging in the end. No? And there's no time to take on b5, because everything is coming with tempo. Knight d5, I attack the queen. Um, knight takes, here I can take, I can take either way, no? Rook d5 looks very good, because then I have rook d6, and bishop d5 is also attacking the rook. Uh, rook d5 and rook d6, I think. If the knight moves, I have rook, rook d6. Yeah. So this position looks, uh, looks really good. In the game, he played queen b7, and after sorry, queen b7 here, and now knight f5. Same idea, but. Our pieces are placed better. No? For example, now rook e8 doesn't exist because we have the knight c7 idea. Rook e8, knight c7. Actually, either rook to e8, I have knight c7. Uh, knight b6 was played, and here uh, knight c3, and one of the pawns will eventually fall. Rook d8 takes here, and we can take on d5 because the bishop on e7 will be hanging in the end, for example. If knight takes, I can simply take. And now if rook takes, I'm going to take, and there's no queen takes because of knight e7, so that has won me, <laughs> has won me some material. Okay, great. This is the idea that I wanted to show here in this position with the hanging pawns. Uh, we are not going to see the full game, just this idea that uh, in some positions, if our opponent hasn't gotten this dynamic play and our pieces are well placed, there are all kinds of pins um, when there's pressure against the hanging pawns and we will have these tactics. Here we see knight d4 and we're go going to see some more next. So let's move on to this position where we have a hanging pawn. Um, and here white plays uh, bishop to d3. Well, this is one of the typical ideas in uh, the isolated queen's pawn. The pawn on d4 is known as an isolated queen's pawn. And again, should be a weakness. Uh, a weakness, it's all alone there on d4, but uh, as the hanging pawns do, the, the isolated pawn gives a lot of play for the side having it. It controls many squares, it gives space and there are all kinds of uh, tactics possible. We are going to see a few today. And bishop d3 is one of the typical ideas because, well, if we cannot play for the uh, main idea of pushing d5, here the, the d4 pawn is well blocked, we are going to try to attack on the king side. And in this case, the bishop on d3 is very well placed, attacks h7, and many times the next move will be queen e4, or in case of knight b4, as it happened here, the bishop goes to b1. We want to keep this bishop and 
then use it to uh, create more threats against the king. So here, bishop d7 was played. Now knight e5. Notice how white uh, is bringing their pieces on better squares. Bishop c6. The other knight comes in, knight e4. Now rook c8. And what should we do next? What else can we do in this position? Let's try to find some moves together. together. <laughs> Has Sophie become a GM yet? Uh, Sophie is in <laughs> in the process of becoming uh, a GM. She's actually playing a tournament today. So let's keep us uh, our finger crossed for her. She'll be back probably next week. Yes, Jose, I understand you. I speak Spanish as well, so you can write in Spanish. Let's see what else can we do here. Queen h5 is an idea that's uh, being suggested. Okay, bring the queen in. <laughs> yes, I'm having some cappuccino. Why not the uh, knight takes c6 to destroy their pawn structure on the previous move? Uh, I guess you mean instead of knight e4, I'm just going to go back for one second here, knight takes c6. Yeah, sure, you can play knight takes c6. Um, but here I think black has a choice, they can take either way, doesn't mean that they have to take with the b-pawn. But one of the things that we are going to discuss in our uh, master classes is that this structure is not really that bad for the side playing against the isolated pawn. Uh, so that's that's actually a good question. Here, the pawn on c6, yes, this is a weak pawn and the pawn on a6 also becomes weak. But on the other hand, by having a pawn on c6, now I kind of reinforce the square d5 and d4, d5 is never going to be an option for white. And for this reason, many times black willingly, willingly captures with the b pawn on c6. Uh, when they have the option of taking back with a piece. I want to take with my B pawn and fix the pawn on D4 and eventually win it. Uh, we are going to see that one of uh, the ideas after piling up on the D file, of course, black wants to bring both rooks there, get the queen out, but at some point uh, they will push one of the pawns um, to, to win the pawn on D4. There will be some pins on the D file that they can use. So the pawn on C6, in this case is not necessarily a bad pawn. Yes, white cannot really attack it. That's a big problem for white. Why is it why is it weak if I cannot use its weakness, no? But black can keep developing queen b6, rook d8 and uh, put pressure on d4. So let's see let's see what other options we had here. I think Queen to g4 is another another option. Yes, black did give up the the bishop pair after knight takes c6, but uh, this uh, these concepts are always double edged. It always depends on the position that we have on the board, and black's knights are very strong as well. No, I have a great knight on d5 that cannot be dislodged, and the knight on b4 is also quite annoying. So it's not that clear. The position is too complicated. White has some pluses, but black also has uh, some things to play for. The pawn on, on d4. 
and the bishop pair is not yet that powerful. No, white still needs to uh, get some pieces out. Yes, and the dark square bishop which usually gets traded off. So here I saw another um, suggestion of rook a3 and rook g3, and this is the the idea that I wanted to show with this uh, game. Rook a3 and rook g3 or rook h3 is another idea that we see often in positions with the isolated pawn, the rook lift. We see it via the a file, we see it via the c file, uh, and we sometimes see it via the d file, depending on the rook has landed. And here, well, what I want to, to tell you is that you have many moves. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, queen g4, for example. Probably that's, that's also fine. Uh, but rook a3 is a very interesting move that brings another piece, uh, develops another piece also, no? brings it into the attack. We want to bring it on the g file. And it doesn't look so easy for black to defend. Because rook g3 or rook h3, I like rook h3 as well because I'm going to have some threats against h7 when I move my knight from e4. So here black plays, uh, here already makes a mistake. He plays f6 and this is a very bad move. What are we going to do now? What's wrong with f6? What are we going to play with white? Sacrifice the knight. It's not ours. Queen g4 and sacrifice the knight. Okay, looks interesting. What other option do we have besides queen g4? e6 is weak, that's right. But also the move f6 uh, leaves all the other threats around no the bishop that bishop on b1 is a monster and you'll see that the light square bishop is a very important piece in many positions with the isolated pawn whether it's on a2 on the other diagonal or on b1 it's a great piece knight takes f6 is another suggestion but we're going to have to calculate that through because knight f6 what happens if I take back with the knight? Aha, uh -huh. knight takes c6 is the idea, but okay, I can also take back with the rook on c6. Needs to be calculated. Any move is good as long as it sacrifices the knight, okay? Yes, probably. <laughs> okay, you have various good moves here and the idea of just leaving the knight on e5 is very strong. But I think that one that makes a lot of sense is queen h5, no? Nothing wrong with rook h3, probably. We can also play this, but if I want to mate my opponent, the queen is most likely the one that I need. And I want it on h5 because I have threats on h7. I have this pawn, I have this bishop on b1. Queen h5 and queen h7, very nice. So the point is that if f takes e5, there is uh, this move. We have queen takes h7, very nice sacrifice here. And knight f6. This reminds me of uh, a game of Lasker where he forces the king all the way to g1. But here the mate is even easier. Rook h3 and that's mate. So queen h5 doesn't even 
sacrifice the knight. No, it's kind of uh, game's over after queen h5. And here, let's see other moves. No, let's see h6, for example. But if the pawn uh, advances, so there's no sacrifice on h7, I think in this case we can simply bring uh, more pieces. No, rook g3 should be enough. Now I'm threatening to take on h6 with either piece. Queen takes, bishop takes is also a threat. And there is another threat, that's rook takes g7. Everything is uh, falling here. For example, let's see this line, pawn takes, I just take on g7. And this is going to lead to mate. No, And here bishop takes h6, because I would like to keep the king stuck here. I don't want it to leave this zone. So I'm going to take back with the bishop and then there should be queen g6. No, with king g8, queen g6 and it's mate on g7. Or I just bring my knight in, knight g5. And that's also going to be to be mate. And what if after h6, bishop takes h6 should also be winning, yes. This should also be winning. I should be able to take here and well transpose more or less to the other lines. If pawn takes e5, rook g3, no? That's the idea. Or bishop g7. I don't know. There are so many good moves here. Probably both win. I like rook g3. Let's keep some pieces. And then take on g7. Yes, yeah, so the point is that here after queen h5, black is lost. He played g6 in the game. And what do we do here after g6? Knight takes g6 looks very tempting, right? <laughs> yes, knight takes g6 was played in the game. But you can also start with rook g3 if you want. I suppose knight g3 is... Knight takes g6 is the... The most forcing, no? Knight g6, if they take... This is going to be made. We have this great rook that is joining the attack now. And delivering mate. And if they don't take, well, we've just taken a pawn for free. Black didn't take in the game. Play rook f7. But this is a great attack. We haven't even sacrificed anything yet. A pawn up. Rook g3. And this is game over. We're not going to see the rest. White eventually won this. And let's move on to the next exercise. We have another position with the isolated pawn. And here I wanted to show you a completely different idea. So let's see. Oh, there was a question that I missed. So I'm just going to briefly go back here. Uh, bishop e8 after knight takes g6. What happens if bishop e8? I have some ideas of mating on h7. First of all, I can take on e7 and I'm not losing anything. Takes on e7 is check and I just move my queen away. That will be the first the first thing. But I can also play rook g3 and plan on sacrificing again on g6. I have a, a few moves here. This is the simplest, get out of the pin. And this rook g3 is also, looks also very strong. No, I don't think black can do anything here. Okay, let's see here. Maybe we sacrifice both the queen and rook here. <laughs> let's try. So what do we do in this position?
Bishop B1 because we know the previous game. <laughs> And we know we want to weaken Black's position. Okay, what else is there? White to move, yes. We are going to see all kinds of ideas in our master classes, and I'm going to try to explain them all. These are just a few of them, there are so many others in these positions with the isolated pawn. And I see some ideas, knight takes f7 is one of them, and bishop b1 has also been suggested. How about the Twitch chat? Knight takes f7 also. Are we going to play knight takes f7 or not? Rook e1 to e4. Okay, we want to pass both rooks. But rook e1 might lose the pawn on d4. That's, that might be a tiny problem. Looks like we are going to sacrifice on f7. Yeah? Yes. We are going to sacrifice on f7. And this is another idea that we have in these positions. In this case, well, the bishop is on a2, yes? Bishop b1 is an idea, but in this position, knight takes f7 looks much stronger. If we didn't have knight f7, yes, bishop b1 would be a great point, forcing black to play g6, weaken a bit the king, and then we have some squares that we can use, no? the dark squares, and we're going to have other uh, breakpoints. But here knight f7 is actually very, very strong. And it works. That's the best part. Um, let's see what happens if rook takes f7. This looks like the most stubborn defense. We are not going to win right away. Here we have bishop takes e6. But the thing is that black's position is tied up. Um, he cannot really play anything because there's a big threat in this position and that is to take on c8 and then this knight on c6 is going to be hanging so bishop c8 leaves the knight and if queen c8 we have d5 and we're getting uh, one of the pieces back we have won a lot of material let's say well, here let's say rook a8, no? just to see what happens if this rook moves away. In that case, the pawn on h7 is going to be hanging, and the king is stuck in the center. So now we play d5, force this knight away, and queen h7. And we have this rook f3 coming next. Black should be lost in this position. It's important to play d5 first. Because if we take on h7 uh, right away, then black might take on, on d4. And our task is going to become more difficult. We are probably still winning, but the knight on d4 is very annoying now. So first d5, push the knight away, and then take on h7 and bring the rook over. Yeah. No, this position is very, very complicated. Let's say he plays bishop f6. Uh, the point of this move is to pin the pawn on d4. Now, if d5 was our idea before, now we don't have it because the rook will be hanging. So I don't have this line that I was mentioning before. Queen takes, and here I don't have d5. But instead, Instead of taking on c8, I can play bishop e5. And this is also very good because, yes, they can take. And yes, we are going to trade queens. But this position is still very, very uncomfortable for black. How are they going to get out of the pin? Right now, the threat is to take and play rook d7. I'm winning another piece here. So let's say they play rook c7, no? Control d7. What are we going to do next? We have 
have one move that ends the game here. Get the knight. Rook takes c6. Yes. Both Twitch and YouTube chat have seen the move. Get the knight and then get the king. No? Rook takes c6 is winning here. Let's see. The point is that I have this rook d8 mate next since the rook on f7 is pinned. Winning. Black can resign already. So rook c7 doesn't work. No? And rook f8. Is also very bad. Rook d7, let's say bishop a8. And in this position, what can black play? That's a, a very good question. Looks like white can advance, make progress, but black cannot really move anything. Cannot get out of the pin, cannot, the mo cannot move the rook from f8. The bishop on a8 is stuck. So here, for example, I can simply defend my pawn on e5 and wait for black to do something. This, uh, this is also very much winning. So this was rook takes f7, but let's see what happens if king takes f7. This was the game. Let's try to find some ideas here. How are we going to continue after king f7? Queen f5 has been suggested in both chats. Yes, there's an idea with queen f5. There's an idea with even with queen h7, no? because the pawn is hanging over there. Queen f5, king g8 though. No, queen e6, I'm going to hide on h8. Okay, looks very difficult still, but maybe I can hopefully survive. Queen h7 first looks, uh, looks good. And then there is another move. Let me see if anybody has suggested this other move that we have here. There is also the idea of d5. Yes, that's right. Mohammed d5 is what he played here and it looks strongest. Because I also opened the bishop, I opened the rook and everything is going to be hanging. And then I'm going to take on h7. For example, now if, what if they take on d5? This is going to be, this has to be the first question. Well, then I take and the, the king is not going back to g8. This is an important point. The king has to stay in the center. Let's say king e8, but then I can start picking up pawns and I'm threatening queen g6 in this position. Black should be lost here. Um, and if the knight moves away, which is what happened in the game, knight a7, now is when we take on h7 and we keep these threats of pawn takes e6. Rook f3 is also a threat. And we are... <laughs> the rook on c3 is hanging, but if they take the rook, d takes e6 is going to lead to mate. If king e8, this is already made, queen g6. So the king can only advance, no? King f6, this is a very, very nice uh, idea here. We have queen h4 check. Why not take the queen? Can we take the queen on d8 in this position? Why don't we take the queen?
<laughs> rook c1 yes back rank and we are going to get mated so very careful with all the all the ideas because we are never playing alone black also has ideas and here we've just lost a completely winning uh position rook c1 game over so no we're going to keep checking queen h4 for example is not the only move but looks good enough check here and then we have another check here on b1 bishop h4 was also possible yes instead of queen h4 um queen h3 for example and here uh, mate should follow if g4 this is really getting to mate a beautiful mate <laughs> on top of it in the center of the board queen g4 game over and if the king goes back king f6 we have bishop e5 and we get the, the rook on c3 takes queen c3 and now we can take on d8 there's no mate on the back rank anymore so this this was rook takes c3 very entertaining analysis did not happen in the game uh, bishop takes d5 happened but now queen h5 what happens if the king goes to g8 in this position what are we going to do This is a game of Rublevsky with the white pieces against Vityugov. Rook takes d5 looks killing and very tempting as well, right? Rook takes d5, yes. We go rook takes d5 and it's game over. And here, okay, there are uh, there are some differences because after rook takes c3 I can actually take on d8 I have d1 covered no so on rook c1 I have rook d1 nothing to fear anymore and the point is that if they take on d5 well we are going to take on d5 and that's that's over as well so king g8 loses to rook d5 the only move that wins here in fact, rook takes d5, but he went g6 in the game. Now there's a check here, and we keep giving checks. Queen takes g6, now he went rook f7, and here rook f3 was played. Not the only move again, but this looks good enough. Bishop takes d5 can also be played, for example, now. But rook f3, rook f3 should be enough. Bishop takes, now I take with check and everything's fine. Here, after queen e4, black resigned. Okay, great. Let's see one more then. Well, this is going to be easy, I think, after all the tactics we have seen. Black has just played h6 here. So what are we going to do? Bishop h4, but bishop h4 looks like, uh, yes, the, the obvious move, but we have to look at other possibilities. Is there anything better than bishop h4?
Bishop takes h6. Yes, everybody has seen bishop takes h6, and that is the move. Um, let me don't think this is a no, this is not a Kasparov game. Onischuk is playing with the white pieces here, and he played bishop takes h6, of course, because now the rook gets in either rook g3 and or rook h3 is coming next. G takes h6, and the game was over quite soon. After rook h3, now the queen gets in. So I have either queen e3 or queen g3 as an idea. For example, if um, king h7, now I give another check. And after bishop d3, I'm going to take on h6. Black tried um, rook takes c4 in the game, eliminating this bishop, but this does not help much. Another check, and another check, no? And now he plays rook e6. That had been suggested in the chat, but now I want to play rook e6 to uh, open the square g6 here and then there were ideas with queen g6 but here it's over no? queen h7 and mate is coming queen g7 or rook g6 let's move on to this position where it is white to play what can we do here we have the hanging pawns now Looks like white has quite good pressure. How should we continue next? What can we do here? Knight d4, which knight to d4? If we are going to play knight d4. Knight d4, yeah, everybody wants to play knight d4. Knight e to d4, yes. Uh, knight e to d4 is the move. And the point of this move is that, well, for example, this knight is again going to land on a very good square. Knight f5 is our main point. For example, if queen e7, right? Queen e7 would be losing because knight f5 attacks the queen and attacks the pawn on g7. So here we are uh, winning material. Simply knight takes g7. If, if queen e8, we are going to go knight f5 again, and this should also be very good because the pawn on d5 is now hanging. Black's pieces are uh, slightly uncoordinated here. If bishop e5, we are going to take and take on d5. And, well, he played, uh, black played queen to, uh, to queen to g6 in the game, but let's see, for example, queen f6. This was the most precise move. Doesn't look like a move you want to play on the same diagonal as the bishop, but this was the move that kind of uh, controls all of uh, the very dangerous idea that white had. But still, we are going to go for knight b5. And this leads to a very good position for, for white. And there's no bishop on d6 and the pawns are slightly uh, easier to attack now. We have various good moves in this position. We could replace the knight. We have another knight that can jump to d4. Same ideas of knight f5, knight b5. 
but we could also try knight d2 maybe try to trade some pieces this knight on e4 is quite annoying so here uh, white should have a very good play and let's see what happens if queen to g6 which was the move play in the game now we play knight to h4 and the knight goes to d5 g6 now he plays f4 attacks the queen the queen goes to h5 and what are we going to do now after queen d6 can we play queen d4 um maybe but, but i don't think that's that's necessary no queen d4 i don't think we need to sacrifice the queen for two rooks we can uh keep building the pressure i think we are going to eventually get one of the pawns so here there are some problems with the queen no we have something better than taking the bishop on, on d6 because here there are some tactics against this king on g8. And our idea is to get knight h6 and mate. So one of the moves that was possible here is g4. That's been suggested in both chats. Great move because then rook g2 is coming. That's the point. And the other move that's possible here, I think they are... Um, fairly equal, the same ideas, is queen e2. Both work against the queen on h5, and we are going to get knight h6 mate if the queen takes. This is the idea. In the game, black plays rook e8, but here now g4 wins the queen. Great. Okay, and I think we have time for one last position let me just see which one i'm going to go for okay this is a pretty one so we can solve this one black to play what would you do here How to continue in this position. We have the hanging pawns but this time we have to play with them. Let's see what are we going to play for. h5 looks dangerous. What else? Well, here we have the hanging pawns and one of the one of the ideas when we play with the hanging pawns is yes look for dynamic ideas but most of them will happen in the center and d4 that Mohammed was suggesting uh, yes d4 is always an idea when we have hanging pawns so the the activity of, of the hanging pawns will become clearer one of, once one of the pawns advances. d4 or c4 in some positions are ideas. d4 is the most common ones, common one, but let's calculate how how are we going to do it? d4 and what what does the line look like? What if they take?
we got two great bishops there. Bishop on c6 and bishop on d6 and they deserve some open diagonals. Hello Kilex, I'm from Romania. Hi George, welcome. Knight takes d2, yes, that's the point. And you can do it, I think, either way, but knight takes d2 first looks um, like the most precise move order. We're going to take first on d2, knight takes, and here d4. Because if we play d4 first, I think the only difference is that white could go knight c4. We are still doing fine with black here. I think we could even play d3 here. This looks very good. d3 because queen d3 I have bishop takes h2. Now this should also be very very good for black. So it probably doesn't matter too much which way we start. They are going to transpose. Knight takes or d4 first. And now after pawn takes d4, what is the idea? What if white takes back with the queen? Yes, what if white takes back with the queen? If white takes back with the queen, we are going to play d4 anyway. Because then the bishop will open and we have this idea of bishop takes f3, which is very common in positions with the hanging pawns as well. So if pawn takes uh, d4, now I'm going to take on f3, ruin the king's position, and the attack should flow. No, if pawn takes, Queen h4. This looks very good already. I'm winning at least a pawn back. So if queen d2, d4 is going to happen either way. Knight takes d2 looks like the, the best way to continue, but maybe not take on d4 here. Probably black just mi white just missed black's idea, because after pawn takes d4, what are we going to play? Yes, there was a Grand Chess Tour event last year, uh, and I did, I did go there, eccentric horse. I just went to see the games. There was a, that was a rapid and blitz event. So now we just take on g2 or we take on h2 both are suggested yeah you can start either way however you prefer uh, queen uh, bishop h2 or bishop g2 you can take either one we are talking about the double bishop sacrifice here and in the game Nimzovic uh, actually Tarash with the black pieces started with bishop takes h2 this is a game between Nimzovic and Tarash King takes, check, and the other bishop gets sacrificed. And this is already over. If king takes g2, then queen g4 comes, and the rook joins the attack. Rook d5, typical idea, and rook h5 is coming. And in the game, white played f3, but this also loses. We have, I think more than one move but the most precise is rook e8 because we want to have rook e2 and prevent the king from escaping now if we played queen h1 in this position then king h king f2 and maybe maybe the king runs away but here with the rook on e8 that's not going to happen knight e4 and now queen h1 takes on f1 and this is already over he played d5 but f5 careful not to get mated just don't forget about the mate on g7 and everything is going to be fine here everything comes with check though f4 and we have another beautiful mate here Rook e8. 
and bishop b5. And the game was over. And I think with this we are going to finish our today's uh, preview. I have many more interesting uh, positions to show you and many more ideas to share with you, but that's going to be for the masterclass. So make sure to sign up for it. Uh, remember that you guys have a discount for the first ones since we are just starting out. Uh, my first masterclass is going to be on the isolated queen's pawn. We have seen some ideas today. We are going to learn also how to play against the isolated pawn, how to try to play against all these threats. The first uh, masterclass, the one on Tuesday, is going to be on attacking plans uh, in the isolated queen's pawn. We are going to see some different ones from the ones that we already saw today, of course, and well, they're just going to be better. <laughs> this was just a, a very short preview and I have uh, I have kept the best for the masterclass. So make sure that you guys uh, go to coaches and sign up for, for my masterclasses. See you guys on Tuesday. Thank you very much for joining uh, this stream. And I hope to see you soon, probably with Sophie soon enough. Uh, once she finishes her tournament, she's playing uh, a few games this week. And I think she's playing another tournament next week. She's very lucky. She's probably... Uh, she's probably the, la uh, the only one who's playing a tournament. My rating right now is 22.56. And... Well, you can check out uh, my other videos if you if you want to see what my lessons look like. Okay, thank you very much. If you have, if you have any other questions, uh, please ask them now. If you have any other questions about the master classes uh, or about the upcoming lessons on coaches, Let me know. Okay, if there is nothing, if there's, uh, there isn't anything more, who am I rooting for in the candidates? Uh, wow. Um, let them begin first. <laughs> Let's see. And I'm not sure when, when that's going to resume. Well, AS, if you don't want to participate in the masterclass, I'm sure that's all right, but probably many other people could learn something. Maybe it's just not suitable for you. There are other masterclasses that you might find suitable. Of course, there are other people. Uh, there are more coaches. I'm not the only one if you need a higher rated coach. The masterclass is going to be available on Coaches and is not a free feature of Chess24. You have to sign up for that. The masterclass is basically a group lesson. It's just called a masterclass. I'm not sure if that's... Uh that's confusing, maybe. Basically, they are all... Uh, you have a, a level and you already know what to expect there, so... So you have all the info if you need more. My lessons are, uh, well, my group lessons are directed to uh, improving and intermediate players. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And
hope to see you on Tuesday for uh, the, the group lesson. And if, if it's not on Tuesday, then hopefully on my next stream.